Hello and welcome to this Nice Vibrations tutorial. Today we're going to focus on how to add Nice Vibrations to your game in code. So um, I'm in the project I created in the last video where I imported the asset. And as you can see, I have my Nice Vibrations folder and I have a scenes folder. I'm going to rename that into tests uh, or something. Test is good. And I'm going to rename that into test scene and open it. So I have my nice empty scene. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class and call it test nice vibes. But you can call it anything it really doesn't matter. And we're going to open that in Visual Studio. And basically this class, we're going to use it to um, expose a public method or maybe more than one uh, that we're going to use from a button in our game so i'm going to go and uh, declare a public void uh, test vibration just like that and um, when in doubt i can always look at the documentation which explains all the aspects of uh, using night vibrations. You learn more about how haptics work and uh, how you can create your own patterns. And uh, we're going to start by adding a few things. So I'm going to copy that uh, and I'm going to say I'm going to be using more, vi more mountains to nice vibrations. So that's a, uh, the namespace I'm going to be using. And without that, of course, I can't call uh, nice vibrations methods. And if there's only one thing to know about my nice vibrations is that uh, most, if not all of its methods, you can call using the MM vibration manager. So the most simple thing you can do is called vibrate. The downside of that is that it won't give you much control and it's going to result in a vibration of a kind that really depends on the device you're running it on, the way the manufacturer implemented the API and so on. So um, I wouldn't recommend using that line, but uh, we're gonna see that it works. And another thing I can do, because uh, in this tutorial, I'll be testing on PC um, and maybe with a, with a gamepad to try to make you hear the, uh, the rumble. Um, I'm also gonna add a debug log that says, uh, test vibration. So now if I go back to Unity, um, what I want to do is create a button and maybe more buttons after that on screen that I can press and trigger the methods in the class that we just created. So I'm going to start by going to UI button and I'm going to make that button bigger and center it maybe. So that we can see it in our scene view. Uh, I'm going to rename that with the name of the method uh, that we created, which is test vibration. I'm going to make it bigger. And now what I want to do is create an empty object, call it test nice vibes. That's a lot of test methods, but never mind that. And what I want is that every time I click on that button, I trigger a method on this test nice vibes class. So test vibration. If I press play now and press the button, you see that we get all debug log, but we don't get much more. So let's see uh, what else we can do with nice vibration. So to start having fun, I'm going to go back to uh, this and edit this very simplistic call to do something a bit, a bit more interesting. So one of the easiest methods you can use in Nice Vibrations is haptic. As you can see, it takes as a parameter a haptic type. So these are presets uh, that I designed around Apple's guidelines, really, uh, because they were exemplary in that regard. And so these are like nine or 10 uh, base presets you can use for very simple haptics. 
um, you have the heavy, light, and medium impacts. You have the rigid and soft impacts. You've got uh, selection, success, and warning, as well as failure, which are um, combinations, sort of tiny patterns. So let's start with the heavy impact. And you can decide whether or not you want to default to regular vibration on devices that wouldn't support haptics. I'm going to set no to that. Uh, whether or not we want to support rumble and in the case of this demo we do because uh, I have a Xbox gamepad with me and hopefully you'll be able to hear it rumble uh, you wouldn't hear uh, a phone rumble unless you know I did use like a glass to amplify the sound or something but uh, the gamepad will be I think audible by you guys so um, the last thing it's asking for is a coroutine support and I'm just gonna use this as my coroutine support I can then save that um, I'm actually gonna remove that line so now when we press on the button these two lines are gonna be executed we're gonna get a debug log and we're gonna get a vibration on that gamepad I'm holding right now so I'm gonna clear the console I'm gonna press play I'm gonna hold the gamepad next to the mic I hope you heard that I'm gonna do it again so we get a nice and simple um, vibration let's uh, try something different in my class here I'm gonna declare a public haptic types and call it haptic type which I'm gonna initialize with a heavy impact or something and instead of uh, hard coding really the heavy impact here, I'm gonna say I wanna use whatever I set in my inspector. So now when I press play and I select my uh, test nice vibes, I get this drop down, right? So if I um, click on the button again, you hear the same, oh, sorry for that. I think it rumbled a bit too much. Uh, you, you get this heavy impact but if i change it to a light impact you get a lighter impact and uh, i can use the rigid impact which is a bit different soft impact which makes it feel like it's uh, well softer of course uh, and then we have these combinations i mentioned earlier such as warning so all of these are very easy to trigger as you can see in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to trigger transient and continuous haptics. But uh, to close this one, I'm just going to show you uh, some of the helper methods that come with nice vibrations. Uh, so let's say I I want to authorize or uh, ban haptics at my game level. Let's say I have a, an option menu. So uh, to simulate that. I'm gonna go and declare a boolean and I'm gonna call that boolean uh, haptics allowed and I'm gonna say it's true and I'm gonna have a public void start where in start I want to call my vibration manager again and say set haptics active to haptics allowed so whatever I define in my inspector is going to become the, um, the settings for my app. So now if I go back to Unity, you can see that my haptics allowed boolean appeared in my inspector. I press play. I'm again going to hold my um, gamepad next to the mic. I'm going to press on the button and it vibrates. Now if I exit the app, Turn this to false. I still get the call, but I don't get the vibration in. And that's uh, a very nice way. And of course, you can you can change that at other times than, than start, but it's a nice way to uh, control haptics. The other thing I wanted to uh, show you is how you can listen to events. So I'm going to declare a protected void on enable and on disable and what i'm going to do is uh, listen to specific events that will be returned to me by the core haptics interface so let's assume i'm working 
on an iOS app and I want to trigger haptics on the core haptics interface, I'm going to go with MNNV iOS core haptics, which is a bit of a mouthful, I understand. Um, and I'm going to say on haptic pattern stopped plus equal on haptic stopped. And I'm going to declare that method. And I'm also going to say on disable, I want to stop. Uh, listening to haptic stops and what this does is every time it gets an event that uh, the haptic pattern has stopped it's going to execute the code in that method uh, maybe you want to update the UI maybe you want to I don't know do something else uh, this is how it's done in the documentation you'll find examples on also how to uh, listen to errors and reset events uh, these for now are only available for iOS. Android doesn't provide any way to know when the haptics have stopped or if there's been an error with the engine, but that's a nice addition, I think, uh, to the iOS support. I hope you learned something new today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.